Hey pals, welcome back to a new video. Today, uh, I thought I would cover a topic that I've actually not really ever gone into this much detail about, but it's kind of been around the channel quite a lot, which is auto tiling in tiled. My first video on this channel was actually a video covering this topic, but it was me figuring stuff out on a stream. It wasn't very uh, tutorially. So since many of you have been asking for it, here is a video where I'm going to go through the process and the motivations for why you would use this system. So. Uh, let's get straight into it. The first thing I want to show you is like a scene that has, you know, a level of polish that I would say is consistent with uh, what I want to do in my game, right? So we've got a nice, lovely, sort of like parallaxy background. We've got, uh, you know, mid and foreground art resources. And we've also got this level here in the middle, which the player is standing on. And that's uh, a tile set, basically. That's the geometry of the level. Now, this asset here is the uh, is the tile set and everything here is is tiles right so i can go here i can go into the grid this is a unity tile set and you can see that each of these pieces fit inside of these little grid spots okay it's very detailed there's a lot of variation you can see just to represent the ground we have one two three different tiles we have slopes we have different kinds of slopes we have slopes even on the ceiling uh, different kinds of walls and there's not a lot of repetition visually so it's a lot of detail and if I was to place these one by one, it would be very difficult to modify this geometry, right? If I wanted to make the bridge a little bit wider or make the ceiling a little higher, it would take all this time, you know, very meticulously cutting and pasting things to try to make it all work and to tessellate correctly. But there is an answer to this, and that is using a feature that exists in something like a software called Tiled. Tiled is a free piece of software you can download and the plugin for Unity, Super Tiled to Unity, is also available for free. So uh, this is the map and basically that map is, is this, right? This is what is, is like the output, but it's not the input, right? It's not what I'm working with. What I'm working with is this uh, more simplistic version. So all I do is I work with the prototype all I have to deal with is this like 12 tiles, right? Or whatever it is. So if I want to make this, you know, a little bit lower, I can bring this down like that. And maybe I want to make that bridge a bit wider. I can come across this way and I work that way. Then I just press control M and it will update. If I make this less visible again, you can see it, it looks just fine, right? I didn't have to do anything. Uh, on a per tile basis to get that visual representation, right? Just to make it really obvious. I can still stay in this prototype layer and I can just grab a bunch of blocks and I can draw like a big brush out here. Control M, it updates immediately. And yeah, it looks like it's designed to be that way. And what's great about this is that this file is saved inside of Unity in my project folder. And when I come back here, it will update immediately. It can be really, really easy to work with these very high detailed assets which you know you want to make for your game um, without having to go through the effort of manually placing every block. So you might ask the question, how do I do that? So the tile sets themselves look like this. Lots of tiles, lots of detail. And the input tile set is, is this one here, right? Very simple. There is a middleman file that you have to create which is called the rules file that does that. And this rules file defines a series of regions and a series of inputs and a series of outputs on different layers uh, above them. And so all you have to do is define the input and the output. So you're effectively creating an algorithm that is a series of rules that says, when you see this, output this. So that's it. That's basically how it works. I want to like build a fresh tile set for you and then we'll make it auto tile now. Okay. Now, some of you might be aware that Unity does have its own uh, auto tiling solution. It's part of the experimental tile set um, package. It's not ideal for reasons that I'm going to get into, but very briefly off the top, basically the reason why I don't like it is because it creates its rules based on proximity alone. So whether there is a collider or a tile above, below, diagonally, left, right, up, down to the current tile. It doesn't have enough uh, space for context out of the box where you can't say, if you see this cluster of tiles, output this cluster of tiles, right? You have more control in something like tiled. And I actually really like the uh, input method. It's, it's very easy to define these rules and see them visually. I think it's a really, really uh, intuitive way to do it once you get started. So yes, you can do it in Unity. Yes, it is limited. And so I recommend the way that I'm doing it because that's the way that I like to do it. So 
you will start here in your uh, art creation program of choice. I use Acebrite and you may have a tile set, you may not. I think the best place to start if you don't have your tile set finished already is to start with a template. The templates online, if you just Google like pixel art tile set template for side scrolling, you will see a bunch of assets that give you a pretty complete set of tiles. You would probably have something like this, right? So the first tile you want to create is just a simple uh, filled in tile. Not every game has single block tiles, but some games do depending on the sort of resolution of your game. Like my game, the terrain is too detailed and the character is too large for one tile to be the smallest unit of tiles. In fact, for me, in my game, the smallest unit of tiles is three by three. I don't really have any colliders that are smaller than this. I might have two on an edge and then I come out and make it wider, something like this. Um, but I never have a block that's just this big in my game because the character controller, he has like ledge grabbing, he can like get up on a ledge and sort of like walk a little bit and he needs a bit more clearance than two tiles to sort of like go through his animation process. But for a simpler game, you might have something that looks like this. So you've got like an empty tile and then you've got like one filled in tile. And this tile doesn't connect to anything else. so. You would, you would sort of go through this process of describing essentially what is touching air. And I often like to just shade them like this. So green is my base color. And then, you know, uh, air I might say is, is this lighter color. You might also go a shade higher if you wanted to talk about what the player can stand on, right? So you've got these like four colors that you can work with. So this would be like a block on its own. And then, you know, you might take this and sort of think about it in a wider dimension, right? Something that's a bit taller. And what you're doing here is you're defining a number of blocks that are kind of like puzzle pieces, right? That's how I want you to think about this. So here, what we're defining is a block that has nothing on its left, nothing above it, but it does have something on its right and it does have something beneath it. So the, the process here is to create a dictionary of unique tiles. That's what a tile set really is. Um, and you can put these next to each other if it if it helps. I like to create a buffer, just a gap, so that I can visually recognize the differences between them. What you can do, another thing that I sometimes like to do is just have a color that defines like edges. So you could even do something like black that just says these colors represent where there is a tile kind of next to us. And so if you don't have these, then you know that your tile doesn't have an edge in that direction. Uh, we could we could use a different color, something brighter maybe. Um, but you can see here when I double tap this grid space, we can see very clearly where the seams are and what they mean. So can we make everything that we wanna make out of just these two tiles? The answer is no, because what if I wanted to make something that had, uh, you know, three by three, right? If I wanted to make something that was like this, it doesn't work because where is the tile that's surrounded on three sides, but not on the side above it, okay? There's no tiles like that yet. So instead I have to make that, okay? So now we have more. Okay, what if I wanted to make, you know, a three by three tile? Well, we don't have the equivalent of these two, but for the sides. So again, we have to sort of create a new tile by making it something like this. Okay, so now we have uh, a single, we have three by three, we have two by two. Can we remove any of these? You'll notice that this tile is the same as this tile. So we can actually remove them. Now in a sprite, just quickly, we can convert this into a tile map layer and it will do that process for us. If you have the Steam version, you can click the beta track inside of Steam and then you'll be able to download 1.3 beta, which has the tile map feature. You can see in that feature, if I hold um, control, number two, this tile two is the same as this tile two. So you can see here, if I just was to delete these, there is no change in the amount of indices, right? We started with this many and then we ended with this many. So those were extraneous tiles. We didn't need those tiles. So now we've got a, you know, a set. You can go a little further. So here we're pretty close, we're almost there. Um, but there is another version of a three by three block that is kind of a little different, okay? So these tiles are all facing outward and there's nothing on the edges and they have a center tile that's filled in the middle. But the opposite of that would be having tiles that have um, nothing in the center, right? So we can just delete this all together and then solid all around the outsides, empty in the middle. And so you might end up with something like this. Now in Insignia, 
I have lots of additional types of tiles. Uh, I have slopes, I have multiple layers of uh, like distances away from a surface. So I have a tile, uh, if you look here, where, you know, it's the surface, which has like grass sticking up on top. And then I have like the solid uh, layer. So this has the actual collider. And then I have a tile beneath that layer for any grass. So there's a lot more detail and the more detail you add, the more rules that you have, the more tile variations you end up with. So if you wanna go like full, uh, full depth with your tile sets, they can get very, very complicated. But to start you off, something like this will, will get you pretty far for the basics. I've just realized we've got a little bit of an issue here where we need some of these to be outlined as well. So for the purposes of this video, this is done. I have other videos on my channel where you can look up some more complex and more nuanced uh, tile set examples. If you want to do more detail, you want to add some grass or bricks or whatever it is you want to do. And uh, if you want to see more of those videos, if you want to see how I do something more complicated, let me know in the comments and I can show you how to do that too. Uh, but uh, so from here, you would export this if we're finished with this. So then I would come here to tiled um, mapeditor.org or they've got their page on itch.io where you actually do the downloads. Um, you can pay for the software. It is usable for free without paying. So however you want to do it, you can do that. Now, once we're here in tiled, you can press file, new tile set. I'm going to call this uh, example video tile set, but you should call it whatever you're going to use for your game. And I'm going to go to tile sets, video example, pick my file. Once you've added your file, make sure that you've got the right uh, tile width and height. If you're not using the default 16, then make it whatever you know that it should be. Uh, and then press save and then save it uh, somewhere in your Unity project, ideally, if you're in Unity or whatever software you use to make your games. So I'm going to call this example video tile set again, because we're in a video. So these are my tiles. They've come in very well. And here, you know, you can do things like add your collisions. So if I click this insert rectangle, I can create a little rectangle that covers the size and it will then be able to be recognized in Unity as a collider. And I can add metadata here for what layer that should be saved to and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm not gonna cover that today. So um, here's my tile set, but this isn't a tile map, right? It doesn't define a level. This is just the tile set. So if I wanna make a new tile map, I press file, new map, and I can make it whatever I want. This is fine for me. So let's just uh, save that and we'll save it in the same spot. And I'm gonna call this uh, auto tile map example. Okay, so here's our map. And what have we got? We have our example tile set and we can come here and draw some stuff. What I'm gonna do for the purposes of this video is treat my filled in tile, right? The center tile of my three by three filled in, this middle tile, I'm gonna treat that like my prototype tile. This prototype tile is in place of what I would call a prototype tile set. So in Insignia, I use a tile set that I call prototype to use as the kind of backing for this, right? So I have my base, basically the shapes, the geometry, okay? And that's this purple layer. So it's just like a filled in tile, a diagonal tile, you know, uh, and that's it. That's basically all it is. Filled in and diagonals in the different directions. So this doesn't define anything to do with space, doesn't define anything to do with air versus ground or texture or anything. It's just where is there something and what is the shape of the geometry for that something. If your game doesn't have slopes, you can literally just get away with one block and you can pull that from your actual tile set. You don't need a second tile set, but for Insignia, I have a second one. So since we don't do that, um, what I'm going to do is um, have this be just the tile set from the middle here. And what I'm gonna do just for the sake of helping us out here is I'm also gonna create a, a tile in the middle, this empty tile that I'm gonna treat as like the ground. Uh, and I'm gonna place this in the center but where there was a gap, right? Maybe we can even do something to make it a bit more obvious that this is not, um, you know, an actual tile. We can checkerboard it to say that this represents like transparency, right? So I'm just gonna copy and paste this a few times, okay? So that's just for us to remember that this isn't part of the tile set, it's just a template, like a placeholder for what we call empty air. And then we can fill the level with that empty air and we can make our level. I'm gonna make this a bit smaller. So let's uh, let's do like this and then we could just auto crop and then fill. So here we are, here's our level. 
and I'm just going to create a bunch of basic example shapes that I expect to be able to create with this system. So I can do this, I can do this, this should be fine. Uh, do something like that, something like this, that should work. I don't think I've got, oh, I kind of have corners like that. I think that might work. We'll find out, I guess. <laughs> can we do maybe a plus sign like that? Okay, so a bunch of shapes, right? Nothing, nothing special. So here's our prototype level and uh, we're gonna see if we can auto tile this, okay? So to do this, we need to create some rules, right? We need to create some logic to determine how this is even going to work. And to do that, we need to create what's called a rules file. So uh, what I'm gonna do is go to the containing folder where this is saved and uh, here it is in my game folder. I'm gonna create a folder that's called rules like that. Inside of that, I'm going to create a new map file that determines all of the inputs and outputs for my files and a text file that points to that file. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new map and we're going to call this inside of rules. We're going to call this auto tile rules name wise. You can call it whatever you want as long as you refer to that name correctly later. So, yep, auto tile rules. And here is where the magic happens, basically. The first thing you need to do is define a, a layer called regions, then a layer for what your rules will look for. This is going to be called input prototype, input underscore prototype. That tells it what to look for for an input. And then output, we'll call this terrain. So what's important is that you use the word regions and then input underscore something and then output underscore something for reference there is documentation for this and you can find this in auto mapping so all of these um, rules about what you have to call certain things or what you can call something else is uh, found here so input and output with an underscore and then the name that's how that works and here's an example here so regions input ground output ground that's how it works so we've got here regions input prototype output terrain so i'm going to be really clear about this because it's kind of a bit specific you start with your regions layer and in this layer what you're doing is defining the spaces where rules are created a rule is considered its own rule any time that the space is closed around it so this is one rule this is one rule this is one rule. If I do this, now this entire space is considered one rule and it will look for this specific shape to apply logic. So they have to be separated by empty space to be considered separate rules. That's how this works, okay? So you create your base tile rule and then you create essentially starting with the simplest rules from top left to bottom right. That's how these should be laid out. And that determines the order that they get rendered in, okay? So this is the starting region. We can make this uh, kind of more faded out if we want. Then you have your input contents. And we're gonna use, remember, this center tile for all of our inputs. So you just paste that there. And then the output is what you want this to turn into. And in this case, I'm gonna fade this down again. The output, I'm gonna say it's the same tile in this case. This is the simplest rule. Put in this, you get that out. If it was this simple, you would just not have this rule. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna show you like that. Let's create a new region, okay? So here we've got a space of two and the input might be something like this, solid ground below and nothing on top. Hey pals, I'm here in post. Uh, I wanna be very specific about something. In our regions layer, we use the air tile as the tile to represent what a region is. In the input prototype, I've said there's nothing above. What I mean is there is air above and you have to explicitly place another air tile on that input layer where you want there to be air, okay? Even if it's nothing in the output, you still need to say that it's air as a tile, okay? So solid tile, air tile, even if there's an air region, the regions don't matter. They're not counted as the input. They're just saying where the rules are, okay? So don't make the mistake of not putting anything in this slot in your input, okay? It has to be an air tile <laughs> or it won't work. All right, now the reason why we have auto tiling is because the output for this is different from the input. The input is just a block with some air above it, but the output is gonna be this block, right? Because that's what it looks like when a block has air above it. That's like the most basic version of what that looks like. Not knowing anything else about this block, 
Let's pretend we want to use that one in all cases. Okay, and we can continue like this, right? We can have two blocks. The input is going to be a block, something, and then air beneath it. And then the output for that block is going to be this one. Okay, nothing beneath it. So it's got this like underside edge filled. And you go through this process for every every side until you've filled out the basic, uh, basic rules. So there's a region, input is ground and then nothing on the right. Output is this block, nothing on the right. One more. Now I wanna be really clear that for all of these in the inputs, we're just using this simple block, which is covered on all sides. And the reason why we're doing that is because in the auto tile map example, that's what we used for all of our geometry, right? These are all the same tile and we're using this to represent just a generic tile geometry. It's the most basic tile we have. So everywhere that there's input, that's looking for these tiles and it's deciding what to do in the output. Okay, and so the output is what comes out here. Now, we can just go this far and we'll get something when we use the auto tile rules. So let's stop here and um, create the next step that we need to actually get auto tiling working. And I think doing this is really important because as we're troubleshooting, this will help having this system set up at least at the basic level. So what we need is to go back to our rules file. We've got, our, we've got everything we need. We've got our tile set graphic. We've got a tile set made out of that graphic. We've got a tile map that's our level and an auto tile rules file, which is also a tile map TMX file. So what you should have is something that looks kind of like this. It doesn't have to be like this. This rules folder I usually just create to create a separation between my actual levels and the rules tile maps, which are kind of like their own separate thing. Um, from here, the last thing that we need is a text file called rules.txt. And what this is, is a little directory that tells you where to look to find those rules files. So for the structure that I have now, the directory that the rules.txt file is in has a folder called rules inside of it, which is here. And then inside of that folder, we use a backslash to say that, I've got auto tile rules.tmx and that's inside of this, the same name. So as long as you point to the right file, you should be able to come here in tiled, press control M, and get something. Once you're at this point here, you're good to go. So already in this really simple setup, you can see the benefits of this, right? We can see that, oh, we've got some light, you know, where everywhere we would expect it to be. We've got like different shades where you would expect different shades of color. If we were to do this by hand, we've taken a lot longer, right? To make a decision, oh, these ones should all be lit up and these ones should all be in the center. And the, the closer we get to getting this right, the more accurate it will appear. So maybe we can define some more rules. What, what are we looking at that doesn't look correct? The first thing I'll say is that um, some of these rules don't, they're not defined enough. So in this case, yes, there is a, a block here that's got nothing on the left, but this block also has nothing above it. It has nothing on the you know, north and diagonal. It's got nothing uh, here on the right. And so this isn't what I would use here. Right, what, how would we describe that? That region would look like maybe this, and then it would look something like this on the input. So this with nothing around it, and that block on the output looks like this, okay? That's what that block would look like. And what you can do is you can copy and paste entire, if you've got all of the layers selected, you can copy them and then paste entire regions, if that helps. And uh, here we can do the same thing. We can just like erase this, take the input, cut it, paste it here, give the output there. And then the output for this one instead is the bottom one. So like that. And then we can do another region. So here you can see we've added some rules for areas where we've got like a, an end cap. And if I press Control M, now we get this looking exactly how we wanted it to look. So that's right. And you can see it's updated here and here as well, much better. We're missing some additional rules here. So one where we've got the middle section of this kind of like long snake. So maybe we can do that one now as well. Now it's really important when defining these to define them in the most absolute minimum way possible. So what I like to do when I'm thinking about them is to think about a subject tile. What is the center of this logic. I'm just trying to define one output tile and in the input tile, that's the context, the minimal context. So the minimum thing that I would expect to see this tile would be something above it, something beneath it. If I wanted to be really specific about this, in fact, these tiles aren't important in the region. 
What's important is only these four. Um, if I was to keep it like this, this requires there to be emptiness here. But in reality, because our tile set's not that refined, we don't have anything. Um, there's nothing about this tile that suggests that this should be empty, right? Down here, there's no like extra bit of light that says there's nothing here. So we should remove these parts from the region because if we had ground here instead of um, empty air, this wouldn't work, but now it will. So let's do that everywhere where that's the case. And that's really what we're talking about. Don't forget to put your air as well as the regions. Uh, so these are the rules. If we go like this, we can remove them all at the same time. So that's a bit more specific. And if we come over here, we can press control M and there you go. The only way to really do this that I'm comfortable with is to essentially just by hand and by eye, just create variations and update those variations. You could, you know, realistically, you could figure it out on your own uh, with some sort of mathematical process or like logical process where you kind of just like create a, an algorithm and then carry that algorithm out. We're kind of doing that here, right? We can see that the there are different permutations. You know, if I've got something here or I'm looking above, it's like, well, obviously then I want to look below to the right, to the left, right? We're going to be thorough and try to do every exhaustive option that we need to. So here, complete emptiness, that applies to this guy here. There we go, updates and it's perfect. So what are we missing? We're missing corners basically now. Like I said, these update on a row by row basis. They go horizontally so that every rule, the top left part of that rule will be the start of where it searches and it will kind of execute them from the top across, 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 across. Okay, what's next? Okay, so here are our corner tiles and you can see that something's happened, right? We went from having a tile work to having it no longer be correct when we update this auto tiling. It works for our corners, but it undoes the logic here. Why does that happen? It happens because this rule is being satisfied by this arrangement, okay? But this comes after this in the list. So the way to get around this is to basically spread these out a little bit more and add some more context, okay? So what we need in the regions is something more like this, where we have solid here as a part of the criteria, right? So this tile only exists if there's a solid block to its west and to its south and emptiness all around. And we could be, if we wanted to be really, really picky, we could say, well, maybe we don't care what's here as well. We press control M and we should get something that looks pretty good. There we go. And I think that for what we've just created, we're pretty much there. Yeah, for this, we're now done. Uh, I don't think I see any tiles that aren't correct. There is one rule that I know we didn't get right, which is what happens when there's something in the middle. So if I press this, press that, here we've got a solid tile here where there should be nothing. So we can define that rule if we wanted to be really particular about it. Uh, and that would look something like this. How would we do that? It's the output is this block. And so the input would be something like this. Now the fidelity of that we would need to create this block is a little bit mm, trickier than the other space because what this is requiring is an empty space here and filled in spaces there, which is kind of a little more specific than the others. It's kind of like, uh, we don't really have diagonal context anywhere else with these tiles. So this is kind of a bit of an anomaly, but I'll let it slide for this, uh, this one time. If you were to make a more complicated, uh, a more complicated tile set, you'd need a lot of these. Okay. So here the issue is that we don't have an example of what this should be doing if there is nothing above it. And that's why I was saying that diagonal context makes it a little more complicated because now you would need a version of this tile which has got nothing above it. Um, I will say right now, everything that we do is being, it's not being overwritten correctly. So we need to make it so that the previous layer is deleted every time we redraw the map, every time we re-add the map. So we can have a property called delete tiles. We can set that to be true. So what you want to do is go to your rules file, go to map, go to map properties, which is then going to update this panel and add a new property called delete tiles with capitalized for the first letters of those words, but keeping them all one word and click that button there. What that will do hopefully is yeah, basically clears the output every time you reapply the logic. So, you know, if we went in our, into our prototype layer, which looks like this. And then we created a bunch of, of space, it's more transparent, and then got the output of that. If we then deleted that from the prototype, 
and then pressed it again, it will get removed from the next update. If we didn't have delete tiles, that would stay uh, because there are no rules that re-update it. So now we're in a pretty good spot. Um, this is essentially working how I would expect it to work in, in tiled and <clears throat> we're getting results that are pretty spot on. From here, you can very easily go over to your Asprite file and just update these to be whatever you want. And the, you know, the solution will, will remain. Effectively, you know, you can just press save and export the same file and you should see that apply here. So now you can start doing some more creative designs with your tile sets and seeing what that does. So you could do something like this, right? And then we've got a bit more of an interior for all of our tiles. You could do the same thing here, all on the outsides. And yeah, now you've got, you know, the start of a pretty decent tile set. It's also auto tiled. So, you know, again, we could be here in our prototype and we can still be working however we want, right? We can start designing any kind of levels. You can just do whatever you want with the geometry and that should update just fine. This is how I do my work in Insignia. The process is not much more complicated than that. I do have multiple levels of tile sets. Um, so my rules, you might've noticed earlier when I was playing with it, um, I've got these rules files, but in Insignia, right, all of these tiles here, all of these levels of grass, they all satisfy the same, the same condition, right? Just solid here, nothing on top, solid below. So why then do all of these grass tiles seem to be different? Now, there are a couple of ways to do this in uh, tiled auto mapping. You can have a random tile and it will try to basically give you one of the different versions inside of that. Or you can do what I do, which is I actually define a second rule. So like after all of these rules get applied, I've got another document here and that document takes the output of this. And then depending on what that output looks like, applies a second layer of polish. So here, what it does is it says, well, I'm going to take everywhere where this happens, right? And that's what's going to happen based on this rule set, right? Every time you see this, you're going to just get that over and over again. So wherever I see this over and over again, instead give me this, right? It's not randomized and it's, it's predictable. It means everywhere that you will see, you know, two side by side like this, they'll look like that. But because of just how dense my tile set is, you really don't notice. It just looks like a bunch of grass. So yes, like every every edge will have the same configuration in the same order, but it's not really noticeable. And I think it's, it's fine for my tile set. So that's how I do that. Um, and you can get, you know, very specific with these as well. You can come all the way down here where I've got, you know, um, quite complicated structures that I wanted specific unique things for. And here I've got like a bridge set up. So anyway, you see tiles like this, you know, replace them with something like that. And that will, yeah, pretty, pretty easily just turn a simple set of, of blocks that look like this into, you know, a bridge that has little supports on the edges, etc. You can get as creative and as complex as you like with this stuff. And as long as you put the input in, it'll just do the output. So that's it. Basically, once that's working you can just save this file bring it into a sprite and if you've got your collision set up you've got a playable level that's auto tiling in tiled and uh yeah i'll put some links in the description for where you can find tiled and also super tiled to unity which is the importer that i use so that's it thanks for watching and if you like content like this you might have noticed i've started uploading some tiktok content most of that content is from my stream on my stream, I'm working on my game Insignia every single day and uh, people in chat are more than welcome to come in, ask questions and provide little prompts. And if you're lucky, if you catch me in a good mood, I might give you a little bit of advice or a bit of a tutorial on something that I'm working on then and there. So definitely come join my stream. It's twitch.tv slash Adam C. Eunice, same as this. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you there. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice. Thanks again and uh, until next time.